Good night, family. How y'all doing? It has been quite a while, uh, and uh, it's a blessing just to be alive to share with you as God has shared with me. And um, the first thing that I'm going to do, the first thing that I'm going to do is read an, ex an excerpt of scripture. It's going to come from Revelation, the book of Revelation, the 12th chapter. And I'm just going to read a few verses, and then I'm just going to kind of let you know where I'm going with this. All right. And Revelation chapter 12, verse seven reads. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought against his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And that great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying, this is verse 10. In heaven now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And we'll close with verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. And by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto the death. I'll read that verse one more time. It has great significance. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto the death. And we thank God for his word and the reading thereof. Here we see John the Revelator being inspired by the Holy Spirit to speak of the things that pertain to war that took place in heaven in the end times pertaining to the to the war and the directive and the the goal of the enemy and the desire of the enemy to destroy the most beloved of God's creation mankind and God's church the church of whom Christ is the head and we see here that he is described as the accuser of the brethren and when we talk about accusations, let's pause there for a minute. When it comes to accusations that are being brought against anyone, most of us know things about people on the basis of what we have witnessed, on the basis maybe of what we have heard, and even more impactfully, most of us have the ability to speak on things on the basis of we, what we ourselves have experienced, but those of us who are people of prayer, those of us who are sensitive to the heart of God by his spirit in terms of if I speak on the basis of what I technically could speak on, what is the fallout going to be? What is it going to produce? Even in the book of Proverbs, it said it is the glory of a king to conceal a matter. Most times when people are in positions of authority, they're dealing with things and affairs that are taking place in the life of people, but you wouldn't know about it. Why? Because a wise king realizes that it's not wise to take these proprietary matters and just to put them in front of everybody, right? That's wisdom. When the wisdom of God is at work, when the wisdom of God is at work, I want to say 90% of the time, there are issues, issuations that need to be dealt with, that get dealt with, but they don't get dealt with in the public sphere. Now, let's flip that around and say conversely, when it comes to anyone who is swift to bring words of accusation, I'm going to tell you 100% of the time, 100% of the time, the individual that is swift I'm, and I'm talking about a pattern with swiftness, with speed. They're going to come and they're going to tell you, look at what they did. Look at what they did to that one. Look at what they did to me. Look at what they did. Look at what they did. Look at what they did. Let me tell you, Satan himself was defined and represented in scripture as the accuser of the brethren. That is the spirit that he is. He is a liar. He is an accuser. That is who and what Satan is. Therefore, it would be accurate to say anyone that you see that is swift to bring words of accusation, whatever they are accusing, whoever and whatever of, 
I can guarantee you that they are guilty of probably 10 to 100 times worse. Why? The goal of the enemy is always to point out what the next man is doing. Point out what that person is doing. But it's narcissist, narcissistic in its nature because as much as it can point the finger and say, look at what that person is doing. Look at what that person is doing. The Bible said, let a man examine himself. What kind of man? The Bible declares that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his way. When, when, when a person wants to please God, their goal is not to say, listen, I know all of this dirt on you. So I'm just going to throw all that dirt on you. Why? Because they recognize that all of our righteousness is his filthy rags. And had it not been for the blood of Jesus to cover what he could have exposed, it would have been exposed. And we, Lord have mercy, some folks would have decompose on the spot. Why? Because there's some things that God could have revealed that he chose not to. So the nature of every blood washed believer should not be that of an accusation. There are things that we could say. The Bible said they're all things in one of the epistles of Paul. In one of the epistles, he said, well, all things are lawful, but all things are not expedient. There are things that you could say, but all the spirit of God will say, Shh, no, no, you don't, you don't need to do all of that. Why? Because it's not going to edify me and don't destroy your witness to try to prove a point. Don't overthrow your own mercy. What are we talking about tonight? We're going to get to the real crux of this. At that last verse of scripture that I read, which was verse 11, it he says that they overcame him. In this war, they overcome by the blood of the lamb. Why is the blood of, why is the blood of Jesus Christ significant? Because the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Where we want to go in terms of the issue of sin, we have all sinned and we have all fallen short of the glory of God. We have all sinned. It's not a soul watching this that didn't stand in need of the mercy of God. And let me tell you, if the experiences that Jesus walks through, walks with you through are effective just like Jesus said, just like it was said in one of the apostles said, don't think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing had happened unto you. The goal of these experiences that you go through, whether or not it's something that just came upon you or whether or not it was something that you volunteered yourself and you put yourself in the path of. One thing we know for sure, according to Rome, Paul's letter to the church at Rome, Romans 8 and 20, 28, and we do know that all things work together for the good to them that love the Lord and to them who are the called according to his purpose. So what we want to say now, let's, let's talk about when it says, and they overcame by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. Your testimony, what is your testimony? The testimony of Jesus Christ, the message of Jesus Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ. But what does that mean to you right there at ground zero? The testimony of Jesus Christ speaks specifically to in the midst of your trial, in the midst of your test, the ministry of Jesus Christ in your life, the work of healing, the work of deliverance and the greatest miracle of all, the miracle of salvation. All right, I'm going to hit y'all with something that the Lord whispered to me. And let's get to the meat and potatoes of this. If you don't have a testimony that you feel free to share and that you feel compelled to share as the Lord leads, you really don't have a ministry that will be sustainable or effective. If you as an individual cannot speak to where the Lord met you, if you as an individual cannot speak to, no, it wasn't all perfect. No, I wasn't born in seminary. Seminary. I wasn't born in Bible school. I may have been born and raised in church, but guess what? The, 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 the God of the church and the Jesus of the church wasn't always all the way up in me. And let me tell you that I'm a brand that was snatched out of a fire. Let me, let me tell you that the line of the tribe of Judah, he had to rescue me for some situation that I volunteered. Let me tell you, it all wasn't beautiful, all wasn't cute. And there's not a six syllable word that could have delivered me from the from the, from the miry clay that I was of. I've got a story and everything about my story ain't all good, but I serve a good God who loved me in spite of my story and anointed me in spite of my story and called me in spite of my story. It's my testimony. This is my story. This is my song and I'm not going to be ashamed about it. Okay. We're talking about testimony. If you don't have a testimony that you feel 
confidence and sharing where the Lord met you, even in, not only in the place of your strength, but in the place of your weakness, you do not have a ministry that is sustainable or will be effective. Uh-uh. If you're not free, freed by the spirit of God to share your testimony, you, you, you definitely ain't got no green light to go and preach not nowhere. Because it begins in the place where the finger of the Lord touched you. That's where it starts. If you have a bona fide ministry, it starts in the place where the blood of Jesus met you, where the finger of the Lord touched you. Let me, let me, let me share this with you. What we want to deal with tonight is this. I'm going to be sharing some aspects of my testimony with you, and it's too much. It's way too much to put in one sitting. So we're going to deal with it in slices. I want to talk to you about the way that the religious spirit affected me, the religion, the, the religious spirit or the spirit of religion, how it affected me, the religious posture and environment, and how that can, if you are not tuned in to what the Lord is saying to you, how it can suffocate what it is that the Lord might speak to you. The Lord will speak to you through his voice. He will, he will lay impressions on your heart and let you know that it's him. The Lord will also speak to you through your circumstances. There are things that God will allow to happen. And through that, God will deliver a message to you. All right. I'm going to say about 10 years ago, a little over that. I was approached by, uh, by my former pastor uh, about ministry. Uh, and he had shared with me that he had wanted to ordain me a minister. And I really didn't feel at the time like I was ready for it. And I prayed about it and I said, well, Lord, listen, the last thing I want to do is embarrass you, God. So, Lord, what you want me to do? Because I didn't see this coming. I mean, I was a choir member. I was a faithful choir member and taught Sunday school, would speak here and speak there. But I didn't really see myself at that time as somebody that was qualified to move forward in ministry. But yet the man of God who has since gone on to be with the Lord uh, approached me and said, listen, I want to ordain you a minister. And there were some things that God was doing at the time. And I believe that I had heard the Lord say yes. And it was very important to me. And when I say yes, meaning pursue this, even though you don't feel qualified for this, all right, to go forth and I'm going to use you. I'm, I'm going to show myself mighty. I'm going to prove to you. I'm going to prove to you and through you that I've called you without your assistance. Just make yourself available to me. All right. There was a young lady, and I'm going to be stipping, skipping, I'm going to be jumping. So at that time, there was a young lady that I was courting. And here's what I want you to pay attention to. All right. When God is about to position you for how he wants to bless you and use you, you have to know that the purpose of God for your life will be hunted by the enemy. He is going to try to do something to try to toss or overthrow what it is that God is trying to set you up for in your life. All right. So keep in mind, I'm, I'm getting this whole call to ministry. I don't feel like I'm really ready for it, but I believe the Lord said pursue it. But there was a young lady that I was uh, courting at the time. And it's a young lady that I knew for many years. We were actually very, very, very close. The best of friends. I'm going to hit the pause button for a minute. And say, just because I want y'all to hear me say this because I'm saying it on the bullhorn, just because y'all are the best of friends in the vein of friendship don't mean that God has caused you to the covenant of marriage. Listen to what I'm saying. Just because y'all are the best of friends, y'all hang out, y'all, y'all, oh my goodness, y'all just do everything together, y'all listen. Even though it would, I don't blame anyone for saying I want the person that I'm married to be a best friend to me. I want to tell you just because somebody is your best friend does that does not mean that they have met God's criteria in terms of being conducive and compatible with the purpose that he has called you to. All right. And let's just put a little disclaimer in here. This ain't a bad session. If I'm mad at anybody, I'm mad at the devil. The Bible says that we don't war against flesh and blood, but that we, we don't wrestle against flesh and, and blood, but we wrestle against principalities and powers, the Bible said. The rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. So if I'm waging a war, which I absolutely am, I'm waging a war against every spirit that seeks to rob the elect of God of their purpose. Please understand where I'm coming from and, and trust the Lord will give you understanding. All right. So here I am in a situation 
We were the best of friends, kept bringing it up to speed. But, but, but what, watch this now. But once we cross that line, once we cross that line and were operating as if it was as if it was more than friendship, which we were beginning to operate, right along with it came a, I mean, massive conflict. We, you, we, we would fight over just everything. We would just fight and we would just argue and we would just fight and we would just argue. Now, mind you, at the time now, on my mind, I'm thinking, oh, Lord. I, 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 I mean, I don't, I, I can't, ain't no way in the world I'm gonna be able to live like this or, or live with a woman and be married to a woman and be fighting, just fighting, j just fighting. And I want to say from my perspective, she did not agree with my definition of respect or how I felt I should be respected. She didn't agree with that definition. And so how the Bible, the Bible says, how can two walk together except they be agreed? This does not mean that you are going to always agree with the person that you marry, but you can dis you can have a disagreement with the person that God has for you, but yet you're still in agreement. Meaning you can have a disagreement, but yet the soul of you, the connection that you have, the bond that you have, the vibe that you have, the flow that you have, y'all still in agreement, even though you may disagree on a point, right? But this thing, this conflict just began to mushroom to my mother who since passed on, noticed it. And my father since passed on, noticed it. And they would hear me in the room fussing it on the phone, whatever. I mean, just growling and snarling and so forth. I said, my mother, God bless her. She said to me, son, let me tell you one thing. She said, I can't tell you who to marry. I wouldn't do that. She said, but I'm going to tell you right now, if you marry the wrong woman, if you set for and call yourself doing the right thing for the wrong reason, son, you're going to be miserable for the rest of your life. Now, now I, I, I want to cut to the chase here and I want to convey to you who are probably trying to figure out where I'm going with this. Beloved, I did not understand that God was sending me a message through the conflict. The conflict wasn't an announcement that bleach and ammonia had come together and were not cooperating. That was the message. But what fought that message that was being conveyed to me that you are on territory that you don't need to be on with this individual. That in the context of this way that you are trying to relate with this individual, God was clearly speaking to me, clearly showing me the handwriting was on the wall. This is not the woman that you're supposed to marry. But let me tell you what fought that. The religious environment and the religious spirit said, but, well, I just, you know, I just got ordained and, you know, uh, I don't want to hurt the church. I don't, I don't want to hurt the church. I don't want to, I don't think that's going to look good for me to be caught in a woman and then just to kick it out. How's God, how's that going to make me look? How's that going to make the church look? How's that going to make the church look? I was thinking about the ministry and how me going and marrying somebody that I was in constant conflict with, known for years and had a great friendship with. But when we crossed that line, everything started going bad about our interest. We fought, we would smile in public, we would smile in, in service, and we would snarl behind, behind closed doors when we was off the grid. And I'm conveying to you that there was a message in that that was being conveyed to me. Literally, if you touch fire, what man takes fire, the Bible said, into his bosom and ain't going to be burned. If you touching something that's hot and you hollering out, that is a mechanism that literally the, 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 the fact that we are able to react to intense heat by saying, ouch, literally is a survival instinct that God himself has given to us so that we are not consumed by flame. So when we find ourselves in situations and it's just not working. That is a message to us that God is giving to us to save us. And I pray that this would help somebody. But yet, but yet there was an override going on because the religious spirit was whispering to me and telling me, what are these, what is the church going to think? If you kick this woman to the curb, it's going to be a reproach to your ministry. It's going to be a strike against you. Then, I, you know, I didn't know what to think about it. I, and, and I didn't know what to do. I remember my mom said, listen, son, I, look. 
I can't tell you what to do. And I remember my father hollered up. He hollered out one time when he heard me talking about how frustrated I was. And he said, well, don't marry her then, son. Ain't nobody holding a gun to your head and saying, go marry her. He said, listen, God bless you. will be all right. She'll be all right. You'll be all right. But y'all not going to be all right if y'all keep fighting like this. But I still had stuck in my mind. That religious spirit said, but no, but I'm ordained and I'm a minister and I'm in church and these people are looking at me. And at the time, not only was I ordained, at the time, my pastor at the time was looking at me to take his place if he had passed. That, to me, was, was, was more intense pressure. Not making excuses for anything. I'm just telling you what my mindset was at the time. And I said, well, I can't do this thing. So I remember having a conversation moving on with, a, with, a best fr with a, the best man uh, of mine. He was my best man at the time. And I told him, I said, man, I think I got to call this off. He said, no, man, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. I said, no, I don't think you understand what I'm saying. We fighting all the time and we just fighting all the time. Like, I don't have any peace. I don't have any. I literally bought the ring six months before I even presented it and proposed because I was such in a quandary and such in a battle. Why am I sharing that with you? The Listen to what I'm up to tell you, beloved. The blessings of the Lord make rich and they add no sorrow for what God is going to add to your life. If God has anything to do with it, it's not going to bring you sorrow. And listen, the mother of my son, wonderful young woman. God's hand is on her. It's my son's mom. But, but, but yet, very clear at the time, what I submit to you, it was, there, was, there was evidence upon evidence upon evidence that it was not the move that God had wanted me to make. But I made the move that I made because I was thinking about them. But let me tell you something. When I started going on a hell, what on earth, what none of the people that I was thinking about there to save me. Thank God for my family. I can name a few. I can count on a couple of fingers the people that have walked with me consistently over the years. When I wasn't known as how was, let me tell you something. Whether you realize it or not, you're being hunted. Satan is going for, the Bible says, as great wrath. That the, the scriptures describe him, he is one that has gone forth as a roaring lion. That he is seeking whom he may devour. Don't be foolish, beloved. Don't be foolish into believing. That if, if you are breathing, you have a purpose. And you must understand that the enemy is going to do everything in his power and ability to try to deter you and stir you and move you away from the path that will lead you to the fulfillment of God's plan and purpose for your life. You are being hunted. The purpose for your life is being hunted and we cannot afford to be careless. More often than not, the enemy will try to use the individuals that are the closest to you to do the most damage. I'm just going to tell you right now. We thank God for the word of, of God that says, and we know that all things work together for the good to them that love the Lord and to them who are called according to his purpose. Meaning if you made some wrong turns, we all have. If you made some bad decisions, we all have. Every last one of us. Nobody pours a better cup a better glass of lemonade than King Jesus. He can take it and turn it. He can take what you messed up and he can, oh, hallelujah. God is able to build you again and make you another, again, another vessel. Even as we consider in the prophet Jeremiah, where he was instructed, he said, go down to the potter's house. And, and, and God said to him, I will cause you to hear my words. And the message was, I want you to go and tell my people that even though they have been like a vessel that has been marred in the hands of the potter, you are yet still in my hand and I'm able to make you again another vessel that the purpose of God is not destroyed because you made decisions that led to destructive things. What do I want you to take from this today? I want you to take from this today that you are called by God, that you are anointed by God. If, 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 and let me tell you something. If you haven't made Jesus your choice, it is time to do so. If you have not made Jesus your choice, it is time to do so. It's not a man or woman born of a woman that came into this world without purpose. Yet 
Jesus said, I am the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. What do I want that to mean to you? You will not know what your purpose is. You will not come to know why you are here, why you were summoned into the realm of the living until you come to Jesus. He said, if you don't come to, to through me, he said, if you try to come any other way, you are a thief and a robber. Jesus is the way, he is the truth and he is the life. And he is the one that ministers purpose and shows us what it is that we are in purpose to do. And the goal of the enemy is to break us down all the way down, destroy, kill, destroy the purpose that you carry, right? And let me tell you something. It's not humility or compassion when you ignore the signaling and the messaging that God gives to you very clearly through your circumstances. Let me tell you something. Look, look y'all, let me just make it real. Specifically to those who may be in that very same situation that I was in years ago. If you are fighting all the time, you may love them. You may love the granules of soil that they walk on. But what I'm telling you is if you are fighting all of the time, it's time for you to fall back. You fighting all the time. That ain't the blessing of the Lord making you rich and adding no sorrow. That, 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 is, that, that is the intended curse of the enemy to drain you and leave you without no energy, without no vigor, without no drive. Don't do nothing. You're getting sick, nauseous all the time, losing weight, getting headaches all of a sudden because you are stressed all the way completely out and you're going to turn around and tell me that that's how God is fitting to bless you. Two plus two is four. If that's how it's affecting you, run from your life and listen, don't don't allow these church folk to cause you to sign documentation that God never told you to sign. I'm going to say that one more time. Do not, do not. He that hath an ear, she that hath an ear, let you, let him, let him hear, let her hear what the spirit of God is saying unto you. If you don't feel a peace in your belly, I don't care what they say. I don't care what, who said what. If you don't have a peace in the city of your soul, do not sign the document. Do not enter into covenant with anyone that you don't have peace with. Because I'm going to tell you right now, whatever it was before you enter the covenant, the covenant will multiply it and make it a thousand times worse. Hmm? Listen, I done told y'all that my testimony is way too much to share in the night. So we're going to have to come back and we'll continue this by the grace of God. I want to tell you, and I'll read again verse 11 of uh, Revelation chapter 12. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Don't be ashamed, beloved. I can tell you there are many things that took place in my life. Some of the things that I will deal with in messages to come um, that made me feel ashamed. I felt ashamed. I was one who, by the grace of God, had bore a name. A foster name was a name that was that meant honor, meant respect, meant integrity. And I, 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 I felt like I had lost that and forfeited all of the honor that was associated with that name. But I want to tell you the story about how the Lord never agreed with that reasoning. He said, because you weren't honorable, because you were good by yourself or your parents were good by themselves, because our righteousness is as filthy rat. He said, it is my hand that was upon them and is upon you. And there's nothing that you have done that has caused me to lift my hand up off of you. I've anointed you and I've not repented of the purpose that I've assigned to you. But let me tell you, it took me years. It took me years to come back to that place of truth where I was face to face with the heart of God for me, because once again, I was just concerned about those who had been contaminated or what they may have felt. Oh, no, 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 no. I want to let you know, beloved, that there's still a purpose and a plan. I want to tell those of you, because I don't know where you are in your walk and in your journey, but I will tell you that purpose can only be accessed if you come by way of the man, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, the King of glory, huh? For, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The dirty, rotten, nasty details of your story, of those things that will bring distinction, hey, Shandio, hallelujah, are the things that will bring distinction to your ministry. I'm talking about the dirty details, the things that you don't want to talk about. Those are the things that God is saying, bring to me, bring to me, bring to me, bring to me. It's recorded in his word, hallelujah. It is only that you look and live. Some of you will need to kind of deal with this in snippets. 
but I want to let you know, and I want to reinforce to you, when you see the handwriting on the walls, do not m try to make something work that is clearly not working. God is sending you a message and he is telling you to abort a mission that he did not call you to. Do not listen to the whispers of a religious spirit or religious people. Listen, listen to what the spirit of God is saying to you and demonstrates to you through circumstance. God will let you know and give you peace about the decision before you make it. Don't jump in until the Holy Spirit has given you peace about the decision that you're about to make. That's in life, that's in business, that's in relationship. All right? I love y'all, and this is definitely to be continued. Have a wonderful night.